Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. I'll be hosting today's show. On uh, satellite imagery here, we've got uh, the next system coming across the Bering Sea. Lots of clouds spreading up into the southwest coast. Initially uh, mid and high level clouds there advancing eastward and the back edge of the front crossing the Perbolofs here still off the southwest coast southward to the Alaska Peninsula with uh, mid and high level clouds now spreading into the uh, Past the, eastern, uh, past the Alaska range into uh, the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet. Otherwise, a pretty fair day across southern Alaska here to the Copper River Basin. Up into the interior, pick up a few more clouds, and winter weather advisory is still going here over the eastern interior for those gusty winds, 35 miles an hour, and uh, reduced visibilities and blowing and drifting snow. And the blizzard warning also continuing there up over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Winds uh, gusting 50 miles an hour, heavy drifting snow, uh, still get, picking up even new snow with that, especially through this batch of clouds that's shifting eastward. And that uh, blizzard warning will stay out through the weekend into Monday morning, the way it looks right now. Uh, big Arctic low up there to the northeast, Arctic jet, and several impulses will be coming southeastward there from the Arctic, kicking up the uh, winds back to uh, creating, uh, for a, to continue that blizzard warning really all weekend long. Otherwise, uh, increasing wind and snow here over the southwest interior, shifting up towards St. Lawrence Island. A little bit of a break right through here behind the front, and then picking up some rain and snow showers, heading in toward the eastern Aleutians. And that becoming mostly snow here, but north of the Aleutians, kind of on the uh, southern edge of that there at Adak and Atka, and then even colder air and snow showers pushing into the Shimian Atu area. Over the southeast coast, uh, still plagued by the system that's trying to pull into western Canada. As you can see, uh, really making a pretty good jog into the east there with uh, lingering uh, snow showers back here along the coast, rain and snow showers. For tonight, uh, that front, or for today, position of this trough right about through here, bulk of the moisture has shifted into western Canada. High pressure over the southeast interior there, and that trough keeping the winds, gusty winds, snow blowing snow, and the blizzard warning going on the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. And again, a weak trough here, weakening. Improving conditions there over the eastern Tanana Valley, 40 mile country, and pretty nice south and east of the Alaska Range, but we do have the higher clouds spreading in and northward here, the main precipitation area back along the southwest coast, down into Bristol Bay where it becomes mixed and mostly rain for the Alaska Peninsula westward to Cold Bay on into showers, rain showers for the eastern Aleutians, rain showers for the Perbolofs today, and you can see as the snowfall levels drop, uh, becomes snow back out through this area where the colder air is. Winds on the increase there, St. Lawrence Island and Northern Bering Sea. And that will continue tonight, not get all that strong there, but come northeast, look for some snow spreading up to Savunga and Gamble. Snow uh, possibly blowing and drifting there. And then uh, snow winter weather advisory out for the uh, Cuscombe Delta for tonight for three to five inches of snow. And snow pushes eastward pretty rapidly there with strong westerly flow aloft off the Bering Sea. So snow spreading into the Cook Inlet area and then the Kenai Peninsula, the Sitna, Manuska Valley, and uh, especially later tonight into Prince William Sound toward morning with uh, mixed conditions. Mixed rain and snow mostly will be along and off the coast there. So it looks like just plain snow here to the north, drying out for Kodiak Island, diminishing snow showers there for the southeast coast and looking uh, pretty dry now for the uh, Tanana Valley and the 40 mile country back to the west here into the central interior on out toward Kotzebue Sound. Look for a chance of snow to arrive on the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula by tomorrow morning. We've got light snow, or actually blizzard conditions going, gusty winds again. Several troughs will be dropping down, as I mentioned, from the northwest, affecting mainly the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, but that'll uh, be a little more extensive uh, by the end of the weekend. And then for tomorrow afternoon, again, snow blowing snow, blizzard warnings, gusts 50 miles an hour, 40 to 50 miles an hour, be kind of up and down, won't be constant that uh, speed and reduce visibilities will create whiteout conditions at times up there. It stays dry, north central interior from uh, the Yukon back out to the Chukchi Sea. All the uh, snow will be falling down here, numerous snow showers, Bristol Bay, a couple of troughs keep snow showers and snow going. Uh, light snow there for the Kuskokwim Delta, scattering out for the Yukon Delta tomorrow afternoon. System pushing eastward here, right into the southeast coast, rain and snow uh, just about across the entire area there of the Panhandle, right up to about Yakutak, cutting off roughly at Cordova. Could see some clearing tomorrow afternoon with that offshore flow kicking in, those winds north-northwest, tending to clear it out, but lingering showers around the Talkeetnas, the Copper River Basin, and the Alaska Range, spreading into Kodiak Island. Next system out there to the west, uh, pushing uh, gale force winds and again a rise in the temperature, so snow trending toward rain. 
for the far western Aleutians, and then I'll be shifting into uh, mostly ADAC and possibly ATCA late in the day, ridging shifts eastward here. So look for a nice afternoon there for Nikolsky and Dutch Harbor. Still a risk of some snow showers there at the trailing edge of this trough and also associated with that weak low to the north of the Perloff Islands. And just snow showers now up to St. Lawrence Island with uh, barely even a breeze now coming through the Bering Strait and uh, also barely a breeze up there over the northwest. Outlook for Sunday, high pressure shifts inland, weak high pressure here, really just more of a lack of storminess than seeing a presence of high pressure. It's going to be dry with light winds through the uh, southern interior. Maybe a few more clouds in the Tanana Valley, but should be dry. And then this trough, uh, again, I'll definitely keep the blizzard warning going for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, again, with the winds coming back up to about 50 miles an hour, heavy blowing snow, drifting, and uh, that's a little more extensive now into the north slope and extending back to the west, although it won't be as bad as the east side, but uh, it's kind of a downturn, though, even up in that area. Panhandle, meanwhile, pretty clear. Cooler temperatures coming in and uh, still a lingering chance of snow showers with this last trough there uh, over the southern southeast coast, but amounts will be on the light side with none to the north. And even to the north, uh, winds not that strong at all, and that extends along the north Gulf Coast with real lack of gradient. Low temperatures forecast for uh, Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, mostly in the uh, lower to mid-30s or lower 30s, right around freezing here with the panhandle. Uh, probably where it's uh, more clouds down to the south, above freezing, a little below to the north with more clearing, and near the frost point along the outer coastline, otherwise uh, mid-teens for the Copper River Basin to just 39 there at Port Alexander, the forecast low, and upper 30s here for the Alaska Peninsula. A little cooler, but some areas like King Salmon staying above freezing tonight, uh, and Igigik, uh, upper 30s for Kodiak, near 40 for in Alaska, otherwise upper 30s to near 40 for the western and central Aleutians, and uh, falling near or a little below zero over the north central interior there from uh, Bettles on up to Arctic Village, Anatovic, and zero to five above for the low temperatures there along the Arctic coast with uh, Kotzebue looking at a low temperature around four degrees with 12 at Chishmaref and Nome, 23 at Gamble. For the uh, Pribilof Islands, lows will be mostly in the mid 30s and then highs for tomorrow afternoon, uh, mid to upper 30s there for the Pribilofs and uh, looks like we've got zero to five above here for the highs for the Arctic coast, really not much change, uh, a little below zero there for the northeast interior. Highs in the teens to mid 20s for the Tanana Valley and in the 30s, probably see some lower 40s there over the southern southeast coast, mostly seeing, seeing cooler air mass come into the area there, uh, not so much uh, tomorrow afternoon, but definitely on Sunday with uh, high temperatures back up to about 40 or into the lower 40s for the Unalaska area, otherwise uh, mid to upper 30s. And then the forecast lows Sunday morning shaping up like this. Uh, definitely colder up here over the northeast interior, uh, falling into the uh, 15 to 25 degree below range for the Yukon Flats, Chalkitsik, on up toward uh, Coldfoot and Fort Yukon Arctic Village. That's the 22 below there. Eagle minus 14 on down toward Northway, 14 below for the low. Copper River Basin, Gulf Canada falling back below zero for the low temperatures, minus six there. And uh, down to zero to five above for the Susitna Valley, depending on the clearing, could be even cooler than that in the normally colder areas, otherwise mid to upper teens there for the North Gulf Coast. And Prince William Sound, upper 20s for Kodiak Island to mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, mid to upper 30s for the remainder of the Aleutians, near freezing there for the Pribilofs, and about 13 for St. Lawrence Island. And then moving on to the highs, we've got for Sunday afternoon, right around zero up here in the northeast interior in the Brooks Range, Anatovic high near zero, Bettles though, six below for the forecast high, six above over at Eagle with Northway at nine, and about that up along the central and eastern Arctic coast, again, uh, five to seven degrees for the highs with those continued, probably seeing an increase in the winds, deteriorating conditions on Sunday with that next uh, pretty potent trough dropping in and the blizzard warning continues. Mid-teens for the coastal areas of the Seward Peninsula could be a little cooler over the inland areas and basically 20s out here over the southwest interior, except the Yukon Delta, St. Mary's High, right around 20, Caltag at 17, uh, or actually Caltag at 10, McGrath 15, and much milder there for the Alaska Peninsula with uh, highs in the upper 30s there, lower 40s for Unalaska, as well as uh, Adak and Atka getting above the 40 degree mark upper 30s there for the uh, Western Aleutians, 36, the forecast high out there at St. Paul, and uh, otherwise we've got lower 20s up to the north there across St. Lawrence Island. And now, 
aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to uh, flying weather graphics here, we've got IFR driving eastward here, kind of elongating from the uh, Yukon Delta eastward across much of southern Alaska. Lifting northeast though, so improving over Bristol Bay later tonight and into early tomorrow. IFR here from uh, uh, Denali, Ala uh, south central Alaska, right into the Gulf there across Prince William Sound. Starting out marginal for the Panhandle and uh, some VFR over the central interior. Lots of marginal stuff north of the Brooks Range from the Brooks Range on out toward the coast. Northern Bering Sea, lowest conditions there, but uh, much better down to the south, a lot of VFR. And then for tomorrow afternoon, swath of VFR here now down into the Yukon Delta, all the way up across Noatak Valley, Kotzebue Sound, eastward uh, from about the White Mountains there on up to the Brooks Range, IFR now, central eastern Arctic coast portions of the North Slope. Uh, break here again, that area lifting northward next storm, pushing IFR into the uh, western Aleutians, stays VFR for the most part, uh, Fox Islands and off and on for the Alaska Peninsula and improving here south central Alaska throughout the day. Uh, quite a bit of improvement actually and uh, for Prince William Sound a little slower over here Copper River Basin on up into the Tanaw Valley. IFR uh, covering all of the panhandle and then for uh, Sunday morning that uh, retreats back just uh, over toward the border here down to the south uh, say from Petersburg on down uh, toward Stewart and Hyder. Uh, possibly a net, uh, but marginal VFR becoming VFR up to the north there. And lower stuff north and west of the Alaska Range with some pockets of IFR embedded in that and a little bit better to the northwest. A lot of IFR socked in across the North Slope and Arctic Coast right on down into the Brooks Range, maybe marginal VFR into the northern Koyukuk Valley. And out to the west, uh, band of weakening, kind of dissipating IFR pushing eastward here. Uh, mostly down across the Fox Islands and then back up through here with uh, solid marginal VFR back to the west. And uh, looks pretty good. Kodiak VFR, uh, parts of the uh, Bristol Bay area into the uh, southern Kuskokwim Valley uh, looking pretty good as well. And on to uh, Sunday afternoon, rims that front uh, holds together pretty good for a band of IFR reaching the coastline uh, during the afternoon, definitely in Nunavak Island. Uh, marginal for the Perbolos becoming VFR, central and western Aleutians. And uh, still, lower conditions here, central Tanana Valley, 40 mile country becoming VFR. Panhandle, pretty good. Just some lingering marginal stuff over towards Stewart. And a lot of marginal VFR covering the north slope back into the northwest valleys. For passes, Anatovic, marginal VFR, but VFR in the southern entrance. The lowest conditions will be from the pass onto the north. Same thing for Adigan. And Lake Clark and Merrill, westerly flow means a pretty good chance of holding on to IFR throughout the day on western approaches and entrances. Otherwise, the pass itself, marginal VFR, that same uh, pattern also makes for the similar forecast for rainy pass and windy. V marginal VFR, VFR though, northern entrance, and Isabel, VFR to the north tomorrow afternoon uh, with uh, otherwise marginal on to the south through the pass to the south. And that same pattern looks like uh, pretty good VFR conditions on the northern entrance of Mentasta. And uh, Tanita, though, IFR becoming marginal, so some gradual improvement. Lowest in the morning becoming uh, better in the afternoon. That same trend for Portage going up. VFR, those westerly winds kicking in. And Chilkoot and White, uh, VFR deteriorating to IFR. Freezing levels at the surface here at Bristol Bay on into the uh, Panhandle. Uh, a little bit inland there, but 2,000 feet off the coast. Uh, of the Aleutians and also south of the Gulf of Alaska. Icing uh, with the uh, front coming in, look for a widespread area of uh, isolated moderate out here spreading eastward to Atka and also over the southeast coast a little bit uh, more considerable moderate rime icing of about 4,000 feet. Winds aloft, jet stream pushing uh, weak ridging out here but westerly flow and there's that system spreading into the southeast coast. Arctic jet up here starting to affect or is affecting the central and eastern Arctic coast. 9,000 foot winds Strong northwest winds, west northwesterlies, uh, 35 to 55 knots here, blowing right across uh, Bristol Bay, the Aleutian Range, and the Kodiak Island area. Same pattern, 3,000 feet. Strong winds here, uh, really strong out south of the Gulf of Alaska, south side of that low, and turbulence wise, lots of moderate chop here. Uh, southwest interior, southern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak, all the way down into uh, the Aleutians, especially Kachemak Bay and also over the southern southeast coast and the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coastline as well, areas of moderate chop there. 
but uh, smooth throughout much of the interior. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. It's a complicated project, but a simple life. You can study whales all over the world, you can study harbor seals all over the world, but you cannot study them in silence all over the world. So we really need this sort of piece of wilderness, this untrammeled wilderness, as they say, in order to answer some of these questions. So we've been monitoring underwater sound here in Glacier Bay since May of 2000. And the reason why we're doing that is to understand what the park is like from the perspective of a marine mammal, because marine mammals are very dependent on the natural sound environment. If you sort of bring it back to humans, humans respond to noise in very stereotypical ways and uh, other mammals do the same thing. So, you know, if you go to a concert with your buddy and it, the music's really loud, you're going to talk at a higher pitch, you're going to talk louder, and you might have to repeat yourself. And marine mammals do the same thing if it gets noisy. So we're seeing, you know, just which of those three that they actually do. We're here on Strawberry Island for the entire summer. We sample eight to 12 hours a day. There'll be two people who are on our beach station doing scans, marking each whale in the area. Two people who are doing focal follows from our tower, which is a temporary tower that we have set up here on Strawberry Islands. And then we have two people who are in the kayak who are doing fine scale acoustic sampling for harbor seals. Got a harbor seal at 23 meters. Got it. What's her bearing? Bearing is five, eight, two, two, one, two, one. Being able to pair what an animal is saying with where the animal is saying it is, is an amazing <laughs> data set. It's a hard data set to get. It takes a lot of work, but it can answer so many questions. So our cruise ship right here in the background is right on time today. We have a blissful hour and a half before the cruise ship gets here where we can watch our whales in silence. And then our ship comes in, bringing with it the noise that it brings, and we watch our whales while the ship's here to see whether or not their behavior is changing. And then it's going to go up bay, and bring passengers to go see the glaciers, and we are going to get that blissful quiet again to see whether or not our whales are going back to that natural behavior. This is the computer that runs our underwater acoustic monitoring, and there's a five mile cable from my office that leads out to a hydrophone that's out recording live sounds in Glacier Bay. And if I turn this up a little bit louder for the moment, that's the sound of a male harbor seal roaring because it's the mating season. Building a good field team and building some good camaraderie is really important. We have sort of these daily routines of things that we do together. So there's a schedule that we check every morning, who's gonna cook lunch that day, who's gonna cook dinner. And then every day we take a group photo. And then every day we do a daily check-in. We talk about what worked that day, what didn't work that day, and what we learned either from the island or from each other over the course of the day. Surface nine zero zero six zero zero. Last night, there were anywhere from eight to ten individuals uh, right along the kelp bed off the point. And we were trying to figure out exactly what they were doing. So, as acousticians, Michelle and I uh, got a hydrophone. That seemed like the right <laughs> thing to do. Put the hydrophone in the water to see what was going on. Well, we dropped the hydrophone and it was so quiet. There was not a single roar. Nothing. We heard nothing. It was so unusual. One of the things we did observe yesterday was two large bull killer whales who had come into the area that we learned today were transient killer whales. They do come into this area to hunt harbor seals. Mm -hmm. This is a pupping ground. That's mm -hmm. what they come in for. Yep. We cannot in any way, shape, or form definitively link the presence of ma mammal-eating killer whales with the silence of harbor seals. No, but it is quite interesting that they happened at the exact same time. It's always an adventure on Strawberry Island. You never know what the day's gonna bring. This morning at 5.15 in the morning, the area was just boiling with whales. 
I had one 15 minute scan this morning where I was literally hopping back and forth on either side of the theodolite, calling out numbers to try and get all the whales as quickly as possible. And then 15 minutes later, we couldn't find them. Aside from getting to be outside all the time, my favorite part of doing my PhD is getting to work with Leanna. Um, it goes both ways. It helps when you put two minds that think differently <laughs> onto the same problem. Global ocean noise is a real problem. And there are areas of the ocean that have underwater sound from vessels so often that you could almost consider it an urban environment. Glacier Bay is a very remote area and it was set aside as a national park in part to do scientific research. And we're privileged to be able to use it as a natural laboratory where we can better understand the impacts of underwater noise. There are some places that act like characters in your life. And I, I think that a lot of Alaskans can resonate with the fact that living here is like having another family member. It's like having somebody really, really important who's sort of nudging you to be a little uncomfortable all the time <laughs> and to stretch yourself all the time because it's worth it. I've lived here for almost 10 years. I've made Alaska my home, and so I'm an Alaskan by choice. And now, Marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at uh, sea ice analysis, not much change from yesterday here. Still continuing to uh, melt back and erode northward and back to the west, or back to the east. But uh, probably a change coming up here over the next several days to where it'll, it'll favor a re uh, advancement of the sea ice out here, especially over the northern Bering Sea and the Chuk Sea. Moving on to coastal water forecast for tomorrow, west winds 40 knots, gusts 55 here all along the southeast coast. Southeast 35, gusts of 50, southeast 25 over the inside waters, and south 15 for Lincoln Island Glacier Bay. And then for Sunday, those winds swinging around to the northwest, 25 to 30 knots there along the coast, and north at about 30 there for northern Lincoln Canal. Lighter winds for the uh, central and southern inside waters from the north-northwest. And for uh, the uh, Cook Inlet area, north of the Foreland, south at 10, northwest 26-foot seas, Prince William Sound, northerlies at 30 knots, 15-foot seas for the uh, eastern north Gulf Coast. And then we've got storm force winds coming in to the uh, uh, Barren Islands, up to Kachemak Bay, 50 knots out of the west, gusts 70 knots, hurricane force wind gusts, so even southern Cook Inlet, southwest at 40. Definitely a full gale here south of the Forelands, although probably minimum gales up toward the uh, central inlet areas. And then the outlook for Sunday dropping off still west 40 there, 17 foot seas, Kachemak Bay, northwest 45, understorm force for the Barren Islands, northwest 25 to 30 along the coast, Prince William Sound, northwest at 20. Bristol Bay, pretty windy tomorrow, minimum gales there, west 35 knots, 13 foot seas, a stiff westerly wind right across the Alaska Peninsula, gale force westerlies, 40 knots, uh, 21 foot seas here on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. 45 knots for the uh, Kodiak Island zones here, all the way back to uh, Chignik, with gusts of 60 knots in store for Shelikov Strait. Those become lighter the next day on uh, Sunday. 25 knots there, still minimum gales on the east side of Kodiak. Small craft advisories on down the uh, Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula for west southwesterlies, 25 to 30. And south 35 there on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, 15 foot sea. Small craft advisories from Bristol Bay. Out over the eastern Aleutians, west winds tomorrow. Uh, 30 to 40 knots across on Alaska Island, becoming south-southwest at 25 to 30. And then for the adak Atka area, south-southeast, coming up toward gale force with 40-knot uh, winds from the east-southeast on out to the west. Outlook for Sunday, those winds, storm force, coming down to 45 knots after being storm force out over the western Aleutians. Southwest 50, westerlies, 45 to 50 knots, Adak and Atka eastward here, becoming uh, south to southwest. 35 to 50 knots for the Fox Islands. Seas as high as 30 feet. And for the southwest coast, northwest turn westerlies tomorrow at 35 knots. North 25, St. Lawrence Island. Pribilofs, west winds 40 knots. And 30 knots for St. Matthew Island. 
and along the southwest coast for Sunday, east-southeast now at 30 knots. South coming back up to 40 knots for St. Paul, that next storm pulling up to your west, the low center. East, or, uh, east 35 knots, St. Matthew Island, and uh, Gales for St. Lawrence Island, but only 15 for Norton Sound. And for the Beaufort Sea Coast, uh, again with the uh, blizzard warning out for the entire weekend into Sunday morning there on the east side, 30 to 40 knot winds there keep heavy drifting snow. Uh, so uh, gales continue probably through the weekend there, and 25 knots for the central coast for brisk uh, wind advisories, 20 knots on the west side, and a little more tranquil here from uh, Cape Beaufort all the way down to the Bering Sea, 15 to 20 from the north-northwest. And then those will be westerly at 20 for Sunday, and brisk wind advisories here for much of the Arctic coast, hanging on to those gales there, west 40 knots, higher gusts on the east side. And taking a look at tonight's forecast again, snow pushing eastward and crosses the Alaska Range like it's not even there into South Central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula. This mixed area will probably be right along the coast or off the coast, so snow everywhere. Clearing in uh, less uh, light winds in the central interior, and there's a trough keeping the blizzard warning going to the eastern coast and scattering out snow showers over the southern panhandle. Outlook for uh, tomorrow, this next system plows right on into the southeast coast there with uh, rain and snow, mostly snow to the north, depending on elevation, time of day, and uh, longitude there with uh, improving conditions once again when the system passes by. Offshore north-northwest winds, Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, lots of snow showers, areas of snow back to the southwest, colder air, upper trough, a couple of troughs swinging southeastward there, dry over the north. Continued blizzard warnings, eastern Arctic coast, and the next system pushing increasing wind and rain. They'll drive into the uh, Bering Sea there again, just west of the Pribilos, with the gales and storms. Snow, blowing snow back in across the Yukon Delta. Have a great weekend. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating. <laughs>